is Sherry Dansby, Dansby Photography, your friendly, ever loyal, transgender and epileptic female photographer. I uh, come to you today because I was fired and given a very good suggestion by actress and celebrity photographer Michelle Murata, her IMDb profile link will be in the com will be in the um, bio, the description. Um, she suggested that I do a video on Lightroom taught from the complete beginning, starting after you install it and open it for the first time before you any before you put any photos in it okay now I hemmed and hawed about this for a while but you know what she's right so let's get this going as you can see I have Lightroom open but first we're going to go through the basic modules okay they are your library module your library module is where you're going to import all your photos and you now go from there assign the metadata the keywords now Lightroom does non-destructive editing unlike Photoshop and 99% of the other photo editing programs out there and now Michelle told me that her workflow, because she does a lot of celebrity red carpets, a lot of celebrity clients, her workflow and turnaround time for what would have taken her, you know, for example, she told me that she did, spent six hours in Apple's iPhoto editing, and once I showed her some basic things in Lightroom, she uh, spent a total of two hours editing. So it speeds it up rather quickly. Okay, you got your library module. Your library module is, consists of a navigator, all the stuff you find in Photoshop, your file, tab, edit, library, photo, metadata, view, your window, and your help section. Here you're going to see whatever name you registered under, if you registered under your own name or your company name, and see up here. If you do down arrow, you can look up the address and face detection. Okay? For right now, I have address lookup and face detection off. Now, this is going on my experience with Lightroom. I've been using it for about 10 years. I, uh, for those of you who are just following me and know nothing about me, uh, please refer to my video, my intro and qualifications. Okay? It should be in the playlist. If not, it's coming soon. So, in the library module, you got your catalog, which is going to, as you will see, it's going to show all your photos. You got your folders, which keeps track of the folders where they are on the hard drive. And you got collections. Collections are nice because, let's say, for example, <laughs> you don't want to go through the folders and go, okay, but if it's, but if it's, in a collection, you can just go to that collection set, click on it, and the photos will pop up. Then you got your publisher services. Lightroom comes stock with a hard drive published, Adobe stock, and a Flickr. So is Flickr even around? And then up here you got your filters. You can filter by text, attribute, your ratings. The metadata that you put in, or you can just click none. Down here, you got your grid view, a loop view, 
grid view is keyboard shortcut G. Loop, boo, loop view is keyboard shortcut E. Your compare view, keyboard shortcut C. Your survey view is keyboard shortcut N. And your people view is keyboard shortcut the letter zero. You can sort by capture time, added order, edit, rating, pretty much anything you want. The colors sets the rate is a way of sorting the photos and identifying photos. So you just assign a photo a color, boom. This obviously is your thumbnails. You can make it really small thumbnails or really big thumbnails. Down here, you'll see your film strip where the photos in that folder or collection will view. You got your main window and then if you have a second window like this, okay? Once again, we'll get into all this more advanced stuff in later tutorials. Um, other modules in Lightroom that will be coming up is the develop, where you can actually develop your photos. Like I said, like Photoshop, iPhoto, Windows Photo, Windows Paint, who uses Windows Paint anymore, by the way? If you do, leave a comment. Um, you got your map, which you can look up the address of the photo shoot that you did. I do a lot of on location, so my photos are going to be scattered all over. Map is linked to Google Maps, so yeah, you can see... It's a wonderful tool. Place your photos here or here. But if you're a studio photographer and only do photos out of a studio, well, nice thing is that when you put those on the web, that map data is going to populate with Google and you will be able to get more hits. So it's going to help in your SEO a little bit. Uh, you can do uh, photo books slideshows, uh, edit them for print, or for web, and then of course everybody knows Adobe's cloud service. I personally don't like it, but see there's the book view. Now we got the slideshow, all the controls, this is for printing, okay, and this is for web publishing. Okay, um, we're going to go back to Lightroom, and might as well jump right in, and let's get started. What we're going to do is, first off, import from the from whatever folder you want. We're going to click on the import button. Now, my workflow is pretty straightforward, but I do a lot of redundancy backup. Okay? These in here, and I'm going to get one of my old photo jobs. I just completed this probably... Uh, two, three days ago, you may have seen the photo, the photos on my Facebook feed site, www.dansbyphotography.com. Now, while I have the uh, CD located, that's one of my sources of backup, I'm going to uh, pull up the CD. Okay, DVD drive right here. I have my CD loaded, and Lightroom's going to take a minute to read the files on the CD. 
you can see it reading them because this was spinning. I have 92 photos, all in all shot in raw. And yes, for those people asking, I do shoot in raw, but I also do a JPEG copy. I do shoot manual. The only real exceptions are is if it's a, a really low light or you know, like a nighttime red carpet or a, a sporting event, then I'll shoot on one of the presets. So as it's loading the photos, you can see that you can see all the thumbnails loading. This was a a red carpet for Lily, a film by Brian Rios. I shot this red carpet this past Sunday. And that was Sunday, June 25th. That was shot at the Man's Chinese Theater up in Hollywood, California. If you've never been there, I suggest you should go. And it'd be nice to meet a lot of you people from around the world. So, you're going to see all photos, new photos, or destination folders. What you're going to do, and up here there's a copy as a digital negative, copy the photos, move the photos, and add, and then just, just, just add them. Uh, what each one does is, if you are limited on space, you're going to copy as a digital negative because it's a smaller file to work with than a raw file but it still keeps all the same property properties uh copy you're copying the photos like from your um hard drive your sd card whatever the case may be and you're going to add them to the catalog move you're going to move photos from one area to another. Obviously on a CD or DVD disc, you cannot do that. Okay, not to my knowledge anyways. And this is an add photos to catalog without moving them. That's really nice if you already have your photo file structure on a hard drive and you like it, then you can just add the photos and tell Lightroom where to point the photos. Lightroom is a catalog system like the, like you'd find at a library. It just tells you where your photos are. So you're not hunting and picking around going, okay, where did I put that photo? Was it in file 4A or 10B? Etc. For right now, we're just going to go with copy. And... Over here, as you can see, I have them all selected. And one thing I like to do is, even though it gives you the option for don't import suspected duplicates, I like to leave that unchecked because two photos can have very similar properties, even down to the file size. Okay, or if you're importing from multiple locations and in one area they uh, you name the photos this, in another area you name them the same, but because they're in two separate areas, there's no conflict, not until you get into one into one folder. So, and then you can make a copy. I always have this one checked. But for this sake, I'm not going to do it. And then you got your collections. Collections are wonderful. I already have, you know, you can go in here to this plus tab on create new collection. And you can name it whatever you want. I like to name it the collection I like to name of the event 
uh, if it's a red carpet premiere for a film, the Academy Awards, I name it. If it's for a red carpet premiere of a film, I name it the title of the film. If it's for, like, the Academy Awards, one year I shot the Grammys. Well, a pre-Grammy party. Um, and I named it Grammys. But because of confidentiality reasons, I'm not going to use my personal catalog. Now, it's going to ask you for location. And it gives you an option to inside a collection set. If you, for, if you do a lot of portraiture of different types, you know, I've, I personally specialize at Dansby Photography and Multimedia in Westminster, California. Uh, I do special types. I specialize in four different types. Uh, classic boudoir, lifestyle fine art, headshots, and just general portraiture. And you can also say as a target collection, I really don't like, I just usually leave this one blank and that's for personal reasons. But since this was a red carpet, I'm going to put it inside a collection set. Now note, collection sets have to be made in the collections box before you go to import. Okay? But since I already have the collection called, I don't need to create it. So I'm going to click cancel. And you can rename the files from the file name your camera gives it to the event name. If you're a wedding photographer and you want to name after the wedding, like Jim and John's wedding. So this is your file renaming one. I'm not going to rename files. And these are your import settings. You can go ahead and select develop or your metadata, which is all your all your info, your copyright, etc. It will automatically add it. So you don't have to go through each photo and fill all that in. And this is going to go into a subfolder. That's where I'm going to be putting it. And then because there are 96 fo 92 photos, 2 gigabytes, depending on your computer, this may take time or it may take a few minutes. I personally am using, for the sake of this video, a five-year-old Dell desktop. That It's an XPS, so five years ago it was top of the line. I am a Windows woman. I will always be a Windows woman. Side note. Last time I had an Apple product was when the uh, uh, iPod Classics came out, the long, thin, rectangular ones. And I think my sister gave it to me and I donated it. Uh, you know, the ones that only fit like five songs. So I'm going to go ahead and click import. Like I said, it may take a little time. And this is the um, your progress bar. Now it's going to take some time. It's always slower to import from a CD, DVD, even Blu-ray. I know those are quick and fast, but it's always slower to import. 
import from them that is a regular hard drive or SD card or even directly from your camera. Now as you can see the photos are starting to pop up. They're appearing in the photo. I have it on grid view. You can adjust the thumbnails down here and yeah, you know, these photos, this tutorial is brought to you by Dansby Photography and Multimedia, who is endorsed by Lady Connie Sharples, Baroness of Entwistle, England, and she's an actress, author, entrepreneur, and her company, Barony Beauty. I, I use them. I use her products, they're the only products that I will use, and they're the only I do have, if you're looking for someone to endorse or sponsor, I have a link on my website. I will also put it in the bio or the description of, you can sign up, and of course, if you're just a hobbyist, but you got a wedding coming up, need new headshots, I will be, I'll put my booking link in. As you can see, it's actually going pretty good. Now, yeah, we're also, Dansby Photography is also an official sponsor of supermodel Carrie Parker and her academy for models, KPA, which is based over in England, but we're a proud sponsor of her. I have learned a lot from her on how to deal with models. So I thank you, Lady Connie Sharples, for the endorsement, and I thank you, Carrie, for allowing me the privilege to sponsor you. And as you can see, it's moving fairly well. Usually, I have time when I get home from a photo shoot, especially a red carpet. It is usually very late at night, and the and I've been on my feet for 8, 12 hours. The two things I want to do are go to bed and take a shower. So, but... Since with red carpets, the turnaround time is usually 48 hours max for photos. I try and get them done in 24 to 36 hours. So what I do is I start the import, set everything up, set the folder up, the catalog, and I start the import. I go make my coffee, pour a glass of wine, check on them. If they're not done, I'll go ahead and hop in the shower. And then once they're done, we'll start assigning the keywords and picking and rejecting the photos that turned out horribly. Now, as you can see, I one of the things I do, and I highly recommend that other photographers do this, is I take a picture of just the backdrop. And you're asking why. Well, the answer is very simple actually. The reason I take a picture of just the backdrop is if I have to do any advanced editing or want to use it as a cover. You know, say for example, a person in one photo, they're moving their arm, and another photo, they're in the same, they're standing pretty much the same way, but their arm is perfectly still. The photo where their arm is perfectly still is maybe out of focus, and the but the where they're moving their arm is a blur. 
So, I do a little Photoshop magic. And yeah, it may take a little extra time, but the photo does come out really good. Over the years, I've had a lot of people criticize my photography, my style. Well, I guess endorsements by President Joe Biden and Westminster, California. California Photographer of the Year 10 times in a row. So, to Miss Julianne Rico, I've earned my cockiness. But I'm not going to bring that cockiness here. Just that one time. So, you can see that the operations are going. This is your navigator. It's going to show whatever photo is currently selected. Okay? And the navigator, you can zoom in, take a look at the photo, and then zoom out. This is your um, loop view. Your grid view. And your compare view. Your survey view. So like if you got 10 photos selected, you can go, okay, which out of these are the best, etc. Up here is your histogram like you would find in most other photo editing programs. And in Lightroom, you got quick develop, keywording. Now keywording, Lightroom comes standard with three main keywords, presets, outdoor, portrait, and wedding. When you're doing photography in general, Unless it's strictly outdoor, you will always have a little bit of overlap. Always. You can also edit a set, um, and it'll show your recent keywords, etc. But since red carpets are mainly portrait, I'm going to stick with portrait. Now, It's still importing, so yeah, it takes a while. It renames the file, but it's almost done. It's at 89 photos that were 92, so enough of you, enough of me telling you about myself. I'll just let this import. And you can visit my website dansbyphotography.com the link is in you know the description and on my and pretty much scattered around on my YouTube pages uh, if you would like I just need to edit by putting some music on feel free to you know go to my editing playlist which you can find on my channel and, you know, play from there. It's a mix of every type of music, mostly country. And it helps me edit. And one of the things you're going to wonder is, there's a song by Steve Goodman called Go Cubs Go. You're going to say, why are you a Cubs fan when... You live in L.A. Easy. Because I am. So, let's let this finish importing. Which means the photos are imported. I got one selected. Once it builds a smart preview, which is basically an embedded file. It's going to add them to the collections. In this case, I have Heaven's Gate. In 
honor of my dad. And you get that pop up when they're already imported. You click OK, add photos to the catalog, and you got them on previous import. You got all photo, all photos, and then you got Heaven's Gate. And then, of course, you got them in the folder. Now, Lightroom likes to organize by year and then sub organize by the date format year, month, day. If you have a special folder on how to a special folder uh, hierarchy, go ahead. Before I leave you, once again, Lightroom is non-destructive. Okay, this is Sherry Dansby, Dansby Photography and Multimedia. Please check out my sponsor's links below. And also put in the comments what you would like to see.